Well, hello, and welcome to Transporter Guide to the Galaxy. My name is Hoop, and I am a transporter and have been a transporter for over a decade. But I come to realize that in transporting, all of the lessons that are the most expensive and the toughest to learn and the most painful are not anything they're going to teach you in any school, lesson, classroom, something you learn out here on the road through hard knocks. Now, a transporter? A transporter is a person who is willing to take a vehicle from point A to point B for, well, as safely as possible and as efficiently as possible for a predetermined price, usually by the mile. Some companies pay all expenses, they figure them out and then pay you by the mile, but most of the time you are predetermined for a price of moving a vehicle. Now, in transporting you will find yourself moving vehicles, everything from the penthouse to the outhouse and everywhere in between. Now, if you're thinking about being a transporter, or you already are a transporter, uh, I've come to realize that I can help you all out by teaching you some of the things that I've learned out on the road. And I'm not a know-it-all. I'm still learning every day, either joyfully or painfully, new lessons all the time. You never quit learning. If you quit learning and you think you know it all, Quit transporting and go do something else like flipping fries at McDonald's or something safe because this can kill you out here if you don't do it right. There are several different types of transporters and we'll get into those a little bit later. Uh, there's drive away which is uh, about the vehicle I'm sitting in front of here. It's a crane about 60,000 pounds and it's already motorized so I drive that because it's too big to be hauled on a flatbed or a low boy so I will drive it from point A to point B this particular time I'm moving it out of Virginia Beach Virginia up further into Virginia for a utility company now there's haul and tow which is someone that will hook onto a trailer an unmotorized vehicle like uh, camper trailers or construction trailers and move them from point A to point B. Now they are all hooked up to do the lighting and the brakes and everything else, but they have their own vehicle. I do not have a tow vehicle. I have a tow behind vehicle, what's called a tow. And also there is um, a transporter that's a public transportation transporter. Now this is a transporter, I tried this for about six months, drove me absolutely crazy. He'll find a truck, say, in Sacramento, California, and he'll fly to Sacramento, California, pick up a train or a bus uh, to get him close to the vehicle, then a taxi cab to get him to where he needs to go, either Uber or a taxi cab or even walk sometimes. I used to try to carry a bicycle with me, a small fold-up bicycle. Uh, it's not my bag, but some people who like to walk and don't mind waiting, uh, it can be a very profitable way to do it. So they take public transportation, pick the vehicle up and drive it, usually just have one suitcase, and they'll drive that vehicle to point B. Sometimes it's all the way across the country. These folks love good long runs. Myself, I run a towed, which is a car that's towed behind the, the big truck, so I love short runs especially. That's where I figure my best uh, dollar for, per pound is. You will find that transporters are very special, warped uh, individuals that just cannot get enough travel because if you're not used to getting away from home, and staying away for three or four months at a time, or almost like me, just living out on the highway, uh, this is not gonna be for you. If you have uh, family ties and a beautiful home and a lawn that needs mowing, you're not gonna be a happy transporter. 
I try to bring my spouse with me, my wife with me, every chance I get to do the deadhead miles. Live miles are one that you're paid for. The deadhead are the most dangerous because that comes right out of your pocket. So you will get a live contract, say, from Richmond, Virginia to uh, New Orleans. Now driving that's about 1,300 miles and you're going to get paid per mile to take that vehicle. But then you have to get another vehicle from somewhere else, hopefully close, and those miles to the next vehicle are called the deadhead miles. And those deadhead miles with pretty much every company I've come in contact with are paid for by you. If it's far enough, over 200 miles, some companies will pay you a deadhead fee, a minimum like 35 to 50 cents a mile to cover it. Uh, that covers your fuel. It does not cover your time. In the long run, if you're thinking about making 10 or 20 or $30 an hour as a, trans as a transporter, you're dreaming because of the time that you're going to spend out on the road or a breakdown or waiting for a truck to be ready or get there and the truck is not ready or get there and the truck has already been delivered. There's just all kinds of things that can really throw a wrench into your profitability. And these are the things I'd like to discuss one at a time and also safety factors of what trucks to look out for, which trucks to run away from or RVs. I have delivered a lot of RVs in my time out of the Elkhart, Indiana region. And we'll discuss that later, hauling RVs. It's a totally different world than transporting heavy equipment for the utility companies or the municipals or manufacturers even, just cabin chassis. And I'll be explaining which truck is which, which are safe, what to look out for, how to handle that truck, how to handle your truck with a tow vehicle or a trailer, whichever the case may be. Now, after you've been a transporter for a while, you will find out from talking to people on the road that there are several different ways that the company finds to, I guess you'd call, screw you out of a damn good living. Because there is a ton of money in transporting and somebody is getting rich. But I pretty much guarantee you it is not the driver. As a driver, you are just there, somebody to turn the wheel and get that vehicle there safely. Somebody else on the upper end is making the cream off the crop and they are, oh my goodness, making money hand over fist moving these vehicles. But it's not the driver. And it's probably the driver's fault from the, and you'll hear about the good old days out here on the road. The good old days, they paid for fuel, they paid for hotel rooms, they paid for time, they paid for meals, and the drivers were making comparatively a ton of money. Well, the drivers did it to themselves. There were drivers that put big tanks in pickup trucks. <clears throat> when they got the vehicle to where it was going, they either stole the gasoline or the diesel, most of the time the diesel, off from the vehicle they were moving at the last minute. A lot of places make you deliver with a quarter of a tank. If there's any more than that, they would peel that off and or peel it off and have no fuel in, in the truck, which really makes the customer mad. So the diesel was figured out per mile. The ones I've had experience with, especially the heavy trucks, they figure out at five miles a gallon. Um, that can work in your favor on a small vehicle, but some of these big cranes and bucket trucks and flatbeds and winches, they can get three gallons of the mile going uphill in the, in the um, Rockies or the Tetons, the Cascades, or Alberta Rockies. <laughs> hey, you better bring lots of money and lots of fuel. So the drivers have literally screwed themselves out of the company bought paying for the fuel regardless of what it is. Also, um, they used to pay expenses for hotels. The drivers made up these sheets and with a computer page would take these sheets and make them up for like Holiday Inn Express, put up a fake room for $100 a night and turn those in. 
when they actually never stayed in that hotel. It didn't take the uh, companies long to figure out that they're getting screwed. They sleep in the truck or not sleep at all. And uh, it didn't take them long to figure out they were getting screwed, so they eliminated that. Also, they, um, some of the companies pay by the hour. Now, some pay strictly by the mile, point A to point B, plus tolls and expenses. Some people, some companies pay by the mile, uh, point A to point B, and I'll go into that later about using point A to point B to their advantage to screw you out of even more miles and time and money. But that, that comes a little bit later, what to look out for. Um, the drivers would take the wrong route, they'd get lost, they'd visit family, they'd uh, steal stuff off the trucks. Uh, it just, the drivers screwed themselves out of a very good living. So you're going to find it tough to scratch out an excellent living out here unless you know all of the pitfalls and all the way to look for it. The ideal thing to find, and it's rare out here at least for me, is a red carpet ride. Now I've moved uh, because I've got close to a million safe miles out here on the road with heavy equipment and buses and RVs without any reported accidents or damage to the vehicles. I get to move some good high-end stuff. The high-end stuff is red carpet. They pay you if you'd like by the hour or the mile, but it's predetermined, so you don't get stung at all. But they'll pay for the hotel rooms. They don't let you eat or drink or smoke in the vehicles. You don't get to smoke anyway now. But uh, you must pass a drug screening. They pay for all of your tolls, all of your hotels, all of your food and you only have to drive a certain amount, a minimum amount of hours a day, so you're not overtired. And these are like golf pros that you're moving their million dollar coaches, or um, like for Mack trucks, if you're moving their show vehicles, and they want that show truck to get there in pristine shape, so they don't have to do a lot of repair on it. Um, these are red carpet rides, and they pay a premium per mile, plus all expenses, and, but you treat them with kid gloves, too. You deliver them quickly, safely, and don't steal anything off them, and it's worth it. I mean, that is the job to have. And there are some companies out here that they do nothing but red carpet, uh, but they're impossible as a driver to get into. You've got to have millions and millions of safe miles, plus really know somebody to get you in. So... Don't let me discourage you from transporting, but man, you want to take a real close look at it if you're considering, you know, becoming a millionaire with transporting. Because if you, if there is such a way, I have not found it. But I will teach you some of the pitfalls, some of the snags, snares, and things to look out for, and things to run and grab out here on the road too. So, um, again, this is Hoop. Transporter Guide to the Galaxy. I'll be publishing this. I hope to get a couple hundred episodes on here. And they're all going to be in about 10 or 12 minute strips. So if they're kind of choppy. And if the technical end, the lighting isn't good enough for you. Or the sound is bad. Or whatever. The subject matter sucks. I'm just going to report everything I know about it. And if you don't like it, do your own documentary. But for any of those that it helps you out on it. Man, I'm tickled pink. I'm uh, closer to the grave in this business than I am in the uh, cradle, so I'm probably on my way out, but I don't mind sharing the information with you. There's a lot to learn out here, and you don't learn it in any school. So, welcome to the Transporter Guide to the Galaxy.